Hello, this is Warsaw Community High School Principal Troy Akers, and I'm happy to be here today to present you with Volume 3 of our Principal's Coffee. Well, here we are in December, and we're about to move into our final week of Semester 1. The holiday season is quickly upon us here, and as mentioned during the first two podcasts, it is still my goal to do my very best to bring you the WCHS story. I think today is a great podcast with the contributions of all four assistant principals uh, coming in a little later in the podcast. Therefore, the podcast will be a little longer than the previous ones as we hear from these four individuals. As much as I would love to drop the COVID talk, my remarks today will start um, with talking about COVID-19 and some of the things that have occurred. Um, there are a few things that I'd like to discuss and most of you have already been aware of, but I prefer to get this out here now and then move on to other things during the podcast. Um, a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago to the date, the CDC guidelines um, have been changed, which should really be a helpful thing to our students and families where we've had students contact traced. It will help to get them back into the building sooner. The guidelines now indicate that a contact trace student can return after 10 days rather than the previous 14 days of quarantine. Furthermore, even though it's a bit more complex, that 10 day number can be reduced to seven days out with a negative test result after five days out. All in all, it's a better plan for our young people and one that will get them back uh, face to face with their teachers and classmates sooner. So that's enough for COVID for today. Um, I'll move into another uh, topic of interest and um, it, it ties along with COVID to some degree when we talk about contact tracing, but we have a variety of reasons that students have, have been out of school. And we also have built any e learning days, as you know, um, they're set up at least once a month on Mondays. One thing that we've struggled with, with the e-learning, um, we still have students that um, procrastinate and don't really get that e-learning assignment turned around in a quicker time frame so we need some work with that we'd appreciate any help that you might have at home um, to help get your son or daughter to complete that work likewise contact tracing is a bit different um, our teachers are really reaching out and trying to work with um, your sons and daughters and if you're not experiencing uh, that assistance or that communication is not working out the way that you'd like to have it work please contact any one of the building administrators here so we could work directly with the teacher to help your son or daughter out through the contact tracing. All right, if we could go back to um, these earlier podcasts for a moment. Um, I stated during the first podcast that we would love your feedback on the podcast. Whether you find value in this method of communication or whether you really don't, it's all helpful moving forward. I have had a small number of folks remark uh, on the two podcasts, and uh, most have suggested that I uh, really try to discuss specific topics that interest them. Well, one way to have your voice heard is to not be shy and jump in and send questions that you may have to me via email. I'll do my very best to include those in our, con our uh, different um opportunities for the principal's coffee chat i'm going to go ahead at this point and shift it back to uh, our assistant principals and i'll be asking them a few questions about their grade levels and have them discuss some things about um, our second semester i've asked freshman principal mr brett everly to the principal's coffee today and mr everly congratulations you are about to complete your first semester as a WCHS Tiger with the class of 2024. Could you share a couple of highlights from this class thus far in semester one? Yeah, thanks Mr. Akers. Appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you today. 
um, appreciate all the parents and all and, and, and all the kids that um, have allowed, allowed me to, to kind of be a part of their lives for the first um, 80 some odd days. A couple of highlights that I can think of right off the top of my head is just their willingness to get involved. Um, the freshman class is very involved in athletics, in the performing arts, FFA, um, somehow in the robotics club. Um, you go to different events um, across the um, that, that Warsaw host and, and you see just freshmen. And, and if you haven't gotten involved yet, then we really encourage you to find your place here, um, whether it's through a club or through an, an activity and um, where the case is, um, that allow you to be a part of something really, really special here. The second thing I want to talk about is when I, when I walk the hallway, um, you don't see too many freshmen that are walking by themselves. They're always together. Um, and you can't teach that kind of togetherness. Um, as you um, go through the hallways, you see just these groups of freshmen together, um, the vast majority of time making really, really good decisions um, with their time. Um, but the thing that impressed me the most is, again, their willingness to get involved, and then secondly, just their, their way that they're always together. Outstanding, and, and it's really good that uh, you're out in the hallways and we see that, and you talked to me early about the camaraderie that you've seen from this, this group as, as these two groups of eighth graders from Edgewood and uh, Lakeview have merged together to become the class of 2024. Um, likewise, with those positives, what would be something that you believe the entire class could work on uh, to improve upon as we come back after Christmas for the 2021 campaign in semester two? Well, I think this class is similar to, to all freshman classes. Um, the thing that we see the most is um, they don't advocate for themselves. Um, they'll, they'll miss for a variety of reasons, right? COVID, they're ill vacations, family reasons, whatever the case, case is, they'll, they'll miss a couple of days of school and then they won't come back and they won't be really persistent to ask their teacher, how can I make this up? What do I need to do? Um, they'll just kind of just sit, sit there and, and, and not advocate for themselves, just like they would in the classroom with asking a question. You know, so we really want to push these, these young ladies and these young men to really kind of fight for their own um, opportunities to make sure that they're not falling behind they're asking the right questions, um, that they're on top of their, their grades, um, so they take more responsibility in all those areas. Excellent. Well, again, thank you for all that you do um, here at Warsaw Community High School and with this freshman class. And uh, as we get prepared for Christmas break, I wanna wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. Yes, thank you, and you too. Okay, let's welcome Mrs. Amanda Nine to the microphone. Uh, Mrs. Nine is in her second year here at WCHS, and Mrs. Nine, where do you believe the class of 2023 has improved or shined the most since this time last year as we're about to conclude semester one? Well, thinking back to this time last year, I think this seems like almost a different class. I was really worried coming in with the new COVID rules and all of the change that this would be difficult for the kids and they have just done an amazing job. Um, they have dealt with change, I think, a lot better than some adults could. And so that's probably been where I have been most impressed. They've really matured. And even through all of this struggle, they've done really well. That's excellent. And I have noticed that myself. And you and I have talked about the change that you hope to see between the freshman year and the sophomore year and kids getting better adjusted and uh, starting to uh, really pay attention to our expectations because they're more confident in what they do from day to day. So uh, the second part of that question would be if, if we looked at where they are now, um, what do you think an area for growth or improvement would be as we move into semester two after the Christmas break? Semester two, there's a long stretch from Christmas to spring break. And I know that students tend to struggle with keeping that momentum up. And so I would challenge them just to stay positive and um, keep working and really think about what they can do to take some of that stress off when we are here every day for quite a while. They're almost upperclassmen. 
And so um, I, I would like to really see that come out in them, that they can be leaders through this time. Well, that, that's a, a very good point that you bring up. You know, we work with student um, emotional learning with our students and our staff. And I think if they can start to recognize what some of the stressors are, uh, we're giving them positive ways to deal with that stress. And um, I, I think that's a great challenge for this class as they move on. And uh, Mrs. Nine, appreciate you sharing today and the job that you do here. Uh, we really wish you and the class of 2023 uh, nothing but the best as we move forward. Thank you. Joining us now is Mr. Matt Barrett. Matt is in his third year as the leader of the class of 2022. Mr. Barrett, congratulations to you and your wife, Megan, on the birth of your fourth child, another daughter, Alice. We welcome her and that's just fabulous. So excited for you and your wife and I uh, had the good fortune of seeing your wife for a few minutes yesterday. She looks great. And we know that baby Alice has uh, a lot of siblings that are gonna jump in and help. Yep, yep, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Barrett, what successes can you share with me um, that you've observed from the first semester with the class of 2022? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to run uh, the class of 2022. And uh, in the midst of this pandemic, you know, obviously there's been a lot of highs and lows, but certainly one of the positives uh, this first semester was um, I believe our students in the junior class are doing a great job of managing their academics, their emotional state, and finding ways to still be involved amidst all that. Uh, in the fall, you, uh, students were still able to attend athletic events, uh, clubs, and those types of things, and we still saw a great number of students coming out to those events and being involved in clubs, so that was great to see. Another thing that I'm proud of is um, the relationship students are building even in the midst of this uh, crazy time, the relationships that our juniors have built over the last couple years, but continue to build this semester, either with their peers or with teachers, has um, begun to show benefits. Wh whether they get knocked out for contact tracing or whatnot, they have that relationship in place with the teacher and they can connect with the teacher. And uh, lastly, from an administrative standpoint, um, even though it's been kind of a weird semester, um, the, the, the amount of uh, poor choices and um, disruptive behavior and those types of things have went down. So uh, very pleased. Yeah, I would definitely echo uh, uh, all of your your comments there about your class. I, I know we've joked a little bit um, talking about that group when they came in as freshmen when you first arrived and you were both new. Uh, the kids were new to WCHS and you were new to WCHS and the growth that we've seen um, in the students over that time, the maturity level, and, and just uh, a lot of real positives in that group. And really, um, you know, I want to comment on your continued uh, strive for excellence as a leader and your expectations that you set. So you've had a lot to do with that. Um, I, I'd also uh, like to ask if you could look ahead, so to speak, or if you had a crystal ball to uh, to look at your class as a whole, um, what are still areas that you believe um, to be areas with room for improvement as we enter semester two? Yeah, so there's a couple of things that come to mind. Um, the first thing is obviously continued improvement on our attendance. Um, you know, it, it's a unique time, but um, coming to school and being here and being fully engaged and connected with uh, your teachers and with your peers is very important. So attendance is one. Um, credits are huge. Um, as we get closer to the finish line, our juniors really need to make sure they're hitting their marks with the credits. And I always say it's not necessarily about just any credit, it's about getting specific credits, credits towards a pathway, uh, towards graduation, or um, a credit in a uh, specific diploma type are really important at this stage of the game. And lastly, I would say, um, I'd like to see the class of 2022 continue to show respect and grace to their peers and to their teachers during this unique time. I think that's a great challenge and uh, you're, you're right on the, the spot with uh, how important it is mid-year, junior year to, uh, to make sure that you're in line 
with uh, the credits and the type of diploma that you'd like to earn. Um, it really is a time that students can start to think about that next step after graduation and even start to, uh, to get those plans in place. It's never too soon. So thank you for bringing that up. We appreciate you taking time to speak with us today and enjoy a few more paternity days uh, and your beautiful family. Thank you. Well, as we look to cap off this edition of the Principal's Coffee, we have longtime assistant principal, Mr. Terry Rowe, joining us today. Mr. Rowe, welcome. And as the senior principal, you're working all over the place with these kiddos. Um, I know there have been some achievements this year and things that you're proud of regarding this class of 2021 for the first semester. Could you share a little bit and expand on that? Well, thank you, Mr. Akers, for asking me to do this. Um, as you know, uh, this was a challenging year for every student in the building. And uh, one additional challenge I had is I was ta I'm taking over the class for Mr. Clark. So this is my first year with the seniors. Uh, some things that's been really, really nice is to get to know these, uh, these seniors. They're doing a great job showing some leadership with uh, all the COVID uh, protocols that we put in place. Uh, it's been great to see how successful uh, the seniors have shown leadership uh, with their uh, extracurriculars and the sports, performing arts and the various clubs, uh, having to do that with, um, with all these protocols we have for COVID and every, every day is uh, kind of a blessing that, that they get to continue doing that. So uh, those are some things I've been very proud of is that they're really working hard to make sure that they get to keep their seasons, their performances, their clubs and uh, helping us keep the school open. Thank you, this is fabulous information. Uh, I, I've noticed uh, this as well. It, it's always good to see, um, you know, after three years with a group of kids that um, there's a large majority of these young people that it just, it's clicked. Uh, they know where they are, they know where they're going, and uh, we're here to help provide those guardrails to get them there uh, in June. So as the second semester goes, especially with seniors, it's just going to fly by. Um, what advice would you give your class, this class of 2021, as they look to wrap up their high school career? So I guess um, this being my third senior class, um, the things I've seen is usually um, seniors sometimes want to uh, give up, especially if they're um, kind of close to graduation and they're not real sure what they're going to do. But a, a big piece that I give them as an advice is make sure they kind of have a path where they want to go. You know, do they want to, when they leave high school, do they want to, uh, they want to get a job? Do they want to join the military? Do they want to go to college or a um, trade school? You know, something to that effect. And, and a lot of times what seniors, what I notice with seniors is they have a little apprehension because they don't have one of those um, one of those paths picked out yet and so they get a little they get a little nervous about uh, what's going to happen next and then next thing you know attendance starts to slide grades start to slide uh, conflicts with home you know parents are getting apprehensive so I guess the big piece of advice I would have is if you haven't got that figured out yet you know plan you know plan on what your plan to leave is what are you going to do once you um, get that diploma here from us and uh, are, are you going to go find a job, or you gonna to go to trade school, college, or join the military, or some other thing. But you know, as long as you have a plan in place, it doesn't have to be real specific, but just as long as you have an idea of what you're gonna be doing, you know, in these uh, next few months. Um, like Mr. Aker said, uh, these next few months are gonna go like weeks and days. I mean, they will go fast, and next thing you know, we're looking at graduation. So that's kind of my advice. Well, thank you. And uh, it really is pretty straightforward when you take a step back to look at it. And uh, I just appreciate everything that you've done here uh, during your tenure here at Warsaw and that you continue to do and everything that you're doing right now to help get this class across the stage with that diploma in hand. So thanks for joining us. Appreciate it and uh, happy holidays to you, sir. Thank you. Well, as uh, always, uh, appreciate the opportunity to have 
our assistant principals speak on behalf of their classes and, and where things are going and, and where they hope to go. So again, um, I appreciate that. And then we hope in January to uh, have a session where Mrs. Koski and I will talk about some changes with some of these CTE courses uh, that are happening at the state level. Uh, it's not completely worked out yet from the governor's office, but there's a lot of plans there. And we look forward to speaking to Mrs. Koski when we come back um, with the January edition of the Principal's Coffee. I do have a few other comments before closing this uh, edition. Again, um, it's a little longer than normal, but I definitely want to point out that we are, as I mentioned earlier, we are trying to build in a number of opportunities for our students to get their outstanding work in here this uh, final week of school. Um, from the 14th through the 18th, there'll be different opportunities during the school day, as well as some opportunities after school where our teachers and support staff are here to assist our students who might be falling behind. Um, as that's going on, our students that are caught up and doing well, we hope to provide some enrichment opportunities for them during that uh, time. So um, we're definitely looking at a blended week coming up. And uh, with everyone's coordination, uh, we should definitely be rested and ready to go uh, into the vacation season after the end of the day on the 18th. Um, and we definitely could use uh, the parental support during this week and uh, we're looking forward to it and we do think that we've got several things built in as uh, as mentioned to add for supports for our young people so any encouragement you can provide we would appreciate it keeping our mask on and keeping at least six foot of distance um, in the social situations that they may come across we hope that everyone has a fantastic and safe holiday season, and we look to see everyone back healthy and ready for school on Monday, January the 4th. Thank you so much.